So we'll start in 2011. Samsung releases a series of commercials titled The Next Big Thing. It turns out that the uh, next big thing was a smartphone. <laughs> Too big for your hand to hold, now with more megapixels. How disappointing. So don't get me wrong, I actually love my smartphone. It's arguably the most useful piece of technology ever invented. But even the smartphone can be disrupted. It must be, and it probably will be. So we don't have much time, so we'll do a 10 second history on computers. We had <laughs> massive computers the size of this room that nobody could afford. Then we had computers on our desks that most could afford. Now we have computers in our pockets that almost anyone can afford. The smartphone today represents ubiquitous computing. But in this shrinking process, haven't we also lost something? We're now sucked into our technology and our addiction has isolated us, even when we're with other people. <laughs> the smartphone today reduces presence. So we must demand that the next generation <laughs> computer break this trade off between ubiquity and presence. I'm gonna make the case today that the real next big thing is AR augmented reality. Or, as many of you know it, Pokemon Go. <laughs> what you may not know about AR is that you actually already know AR. It's been in our sci-fi fantasy since we were kids. It's C-3PO and Chewie playing hollow chess in Star Wars. It's Tony Stark inventing Iron Man in freeform space with his hands. But it's always just been sci-fi. That all changed for me in October of 2014 when a company that nobody had ever heard of called Magic Leap announced that they had raised a half billion dollars to build augmented reality. That was the first time that I thought augmented reality might become part of our reality. Their jobs page at the time was titled Wizards Wanted. <laughs> and in that moment I knew I had to become a wizard. <laughs> I was lucky enough to spend my past summer internship at Magic Leap honing my wizardry. And I can't tell you what I saw down there. They're a very secretive company. Um, but that next big thing, I believe it's coming. So many of you have probably read about, heard about this concept, uh, AR, VR, right? And I hate this. And so the first thing we're gonna do <laughs> is remove the damn slash. <laughs> VR, virtual reality, looks like this, it's a headset. And it's an immersive experience. You can swim through the ocean, you can fly through space. Um, it blocks out all outside light in order to remove you from where you are. It blocks out so much outside light uh, that you might not notice that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is walking right by you. <laughs> I do believe that VR has a firm place in our technology future but it does not solve the problem. The whole point is removing you from your current world, taking your presence and placing it elsewhere. Augmented reality, AR on the other hand, keeps you firmly grounded in your current world. You see what you would normally see with your eyes, but now augmented with digital images so real that they blend seamlessly into your environment. Right now, AR is early. It's um, mostly on your smartphone, and it's actually pretty silly. But the destination that it's ultimately headed, what people are so excited about, is smart glasses. What has AR enthusiasts so pumped is that same portability of your smartphone, but looking up again, unbounded from the tiny glass rectangles that tend to draw our attention under the table. What we're so excited about is reimagining our digital lives back into the space around us. AR is already a cool technology, but what will make it an important technology is breaking that trade-off between ubiquity and presence, solving that smartphone problem. So to make it real, let's imagine a day in the life with a computer on your head. Your alarm clock will go off like it normally does, but instead of reaching for your smartphone, 
you'll grab your smart glasses. And instead of squinting at tiny emails on your screen, they'll inhabit the space right in front of you. Your self-driving Uber will pick you up for work. Of course it's self-driving. And it's got AR built right into the dash. So you can finally check Twitter on the way to work and see how late you'll be to work. <laughs> at work, you have my dream job. You design motorcycles. And you're working on the latest ride right in front of you with your hands. Your old school two monitor setup isn't quite doing it for you. You need a little more screen real estate. So you'll whip up a new screen the size of the wall, the snap of your fingers. You'll end the day in a global design meeting with leaders from across the world, or in this case, across the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> At home, your dinner recipe will float right in front of you, so you won't have to use your hands and get marinara sauce all over your dirty iPad. And then finally, in the future, you don't own a TV anymore, because you can just put one on any wall in your home. I could go on, but AR is going to be a big part of your life from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. It's going to be on the go, in the office, in the home, and eventually everyone is going to have it. So, usually when I talk about AR, which if you ask my friends, is all the time, <laughs> Uh, I hear one of two reactions. Uh, the first is, uh, that kind of freaks me out. And it should. Technology paradigm shifts always come with growing pains, and AR will be no different. We're going to have to grapple with real privacy issues like facial recognition and the fear of Big Brother. We're going to have to build a world where not every street corner is a digital dystopian marketing hellhole like Times Square. <laughs> We're gonna have to make sure that we don't just take the distraction from under the table and move it into our peripheral vision. Ultimately, technologies win when the good outweighs the bad. And for AR, there is so much good. It's gonna make us better informed, putting contextual information right in our line of sight. It's going to make learning better, pulling information off the page and making it interactive and collaborative. It's already making business more efficient, giving workers live instructions. It's already saving lives, putting medical information right in front of surgeons. The second thing that I usually hear is, whoa, that's pretty cool, but isn't that like 10 years away? And the answer here is maybe but a lot of really smart people think that it's coming a lot sooner. We're still gonna have to fix the uh, whole helmet problem and uh, turn it into a form factor that looks a lot more like a stylish pair of Warby Parkers. We still don't know exactly how we're gonna control it. Right now we have things like these super ugly controllers that you see with VR. We're eventually gonna need to use our hands, our eyes, our voice. But these challenges are being worked on today by really, really smart people. Optimists think that an early Apple product will be out in 2018 this year or next. Tim Cook has gone on the record saying, we believe augmented reality is going to change the way we use technology forever. I actually think Wired put it best. They said that a secret AR Manhattan project is one of those things that every uh, self-respecting tech oligarch must have these days. <laughs> The point is that um, the Facebooks and the Apples and the Googles of the world are already working on this. In fact, in February alone, we saw a ton of activity. Pokemon Go bought another AR startup, Magic Leap partnered with the NBA. This week, actually, Magic Leap raised a half billion additional round. Um, Intel, instead of processors, announced smart glasses, and the New York Times actually covered the Olympics in augmented reality. The point is, this is coming really soon. So, if I've convinced you at all that this is going to be big and exciting, then hear me out. AR is going to need leaders. It's gonna need talent like you. It's got big challenges to solve, but even bigger opportunity. Like the smartphone, the PC, the internet waves that came before it, it will upend entire industries. 
Would you have missed those? But let's return to why it's not just exciting, but it's also important. It's gonna be better for us as humans. If you believe, like me, that the gravity of technology has pulled us further away from the people that really matter, if you believe that there shouldn't have to be this trade-off between ubiquity and presence, if you believe that technology can actually help us end our isolation from the world, then AR needs you. Technologies like this come around once every generation, and we don't have that many shots on goal to get them right. I believe that AR is our chance to look each other back in the eye again. So let's go build the next big thing.